$200 reward. Run away from the subscriber. $200 reward. Nico Run away. Imagine yourself a slave on a Carolina plantation. Illiterate, undernourished, without a map or even the simplest directions. Which way do you run? And how do you know friend from foe along the way? I have heard that so many slaves escaped into freedom along a route that could not be ascertained that the slave owners said there must be an underground railroad. While the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 resulted in the unjust capture and death of countless African Americans, ironically, it also had positive effects its legislators had never intended. Many people in the North who had cared little about slavery until then turned against it. It re-energized and led to the expansion of Underground Railroad routes, and it inspired one woman to lay her life on the line again and again for the cause of freedom. That woman was Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was born a slave in Bucktown, Maryland. She was one of 11 children, and she was beaten daily. As a teenager, Harriet tried twice to flee with her brothers, but both attempts were unsuccessful. The next time I go, Harriet vowed, I'm going to go alone. Harriet Tubman returned south some 19 times to personally conduct as many as 300 fugitives, including her own mother and father and those brothers who had tried twice and failed. Again and again, Harriet went back through the eastern shore of Maryland, through the Great Dismal Swamp, across the Delaware River, and 500 miles more into St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, where the runaways would be safe. So great was her courage, so triumphant her success, that planters in Maryland offered a $40,000 reward for her capture the highest bounty ever offered for any worker on the Underground Railroad. Only the Lord will let them kill me. As so many before her had done, Harriet set out with no plan or destination, only to follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd meant to walk at night under cover of darkness, keeping the North Star in sight. Refer to trees that had been marked with charcoal and mud drawings of a peg leg and a foot, leading runaway slaves north into Tennessee. And they just knew that if they could get north and across the Ohio River, someone would help them to freedom. They knew the disguises, they knew the spirituals, they knew the codes, they knew the knocks. It was through the slave grapevine that runaways came to know that a lantern in the window on the free side was a signal that a safe house was within reach. And they were welcome here. They would be sheltered and fed and cared for, and when safe, moved on to the next station north. By word of mouth, through song and story, slaves began to learn that there was a new place where they might find sanctuary. By the mid-1850s, things were changing on the Underground Railroad. Many of the fugitive slaves who had settled in the North went on to have children, and those children could be educated in the public school systems. Plantation owners deeply believed that slavery was an economic necessity, and that the slave trade was its human stock market. In one fell swoop, all the work that had been done on the Underground Railroad was about to be undone in the eyes of the law. Our involvement with it as slaves was generally accepted. Uh, therefore, it provided um, opportunity through song, uh, through drums, through many uh, other measures uh, to give the word of um, Harriet Tubman was, is coming. With this burgeoning literate class, the written word began to replace the old codes and signals. But getting word back south was hard. Slaves were not allowed to receive or send letters by post or to assemble freely outside of church services on Sunday. Church was 
and, and our involvement with it as slaves was generally accepted. Uh, therefore, it provided um, opportunity through song, uh, through drums, through many uh, other measures. The music as well as the quilts, the way the women wore their aprons, were all used as methods, <coughs> excuse me, methods of communication to let the next slave know where they were going, how they were going to get there, etc. Way down in Egypt's land, tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. To give the word of um, Harriet Tubman was, is coming. As a nurse, scout, and Union Army spy during the Civil War, and continued to fight for black education and women's suffrage until her death at the age of 93. Close to the end of her life, Harriet was reunited with some of the former slaves she had helped rescue. As she was dying, about two hours before her death, she was conscious, and they were singing, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, coming for to carry me home. She died March 10th, 1913. She was buried with military rice at Fort Hill Cemetery in Auburn, New York. They celebrate the life of a woman, a champion of freedom who, like so many others on the Underground Railroad, has become little more than a footnote in history. They realize that it is only through the collective memory of their descendants and dedication to the preservation of historic sites that the Underground Railroad can take its rightful place in history.